So today's video is going to be about something that's kind of taboo, not really touched on a lot. It has to do with my time in the California Youth Authority and the time I spoke to a, a ward, a person who was busted, who was also a victim of rape in there. You know what I mean? A minor victim of rape. And uh, the reason why it was crazy is that that wasn't the first time or the last time I had seen rape victims. But uh, what made this one, you know, a little different was that I knew the guy uh, before we went away. Uh, he seemed real cool. You know, we went to re uh, we were in the halls together. We went to reception together in Norwalk. And uh, we used to rob people. Like, we were broke, right? So we wouldn't do burglaries. Like, we would, like, strong arm, like, see chains, hey, shoot that chain. Uh, shoes, give me them shoes. You know, we just push up on people, take whatever we wanted. And uh, we were broke. We needed to, you know what I mean? That's the way we would hustle. We would rob what we needed to rob, slang it to uh, people who needed to, who had a canteen, you know what I mean? They had hygiene, they had food. You know, that's the way we got by for a little bit. So we get to Nellis, right? We're doing the same thing when we're in intake, the intake unit. We stay there for a few weeks. Then they send us off to the main line. I end up going to Hayes Cottage, uh, and he ends up going to Monroe, which used to be Washington. They got all the wards from Washington, put them in Monroe. Because they were doing, uh, you know, fix-ups, uh, renovations and shit. So, I'm in Hayes for a few months uh, doing my thing, you know what I mean? Um, lost uh, lost track of him, didn't keep up with him. Didn't know what happened to him, you know what I mean? Handling my own business. So, I'm in Hayes causing, you know, causing a mess, you know, getting in riots, uh, group attacks, you know, jumping people, just fights, just doing silly, stupid shit, you know, just a young kid doing dumb shit. And I eventually ended up going to lockup, uh, go to Taft. After Taft, uh, they shoot me across the street to Monroe. So I go to Monroe, and I see him there, right? And he doesn't look the same, though. He's, he looks like like life had defeated him. I'm like, what the fuck happened to him, right? So I asked my boys, and shit, hey, what's up, homie, right here? And they're like, ah, oh, don't fuck with that fool. I'm like, why, what's up? What's up, homie? He, he's, he was cool, you know what I mean? We were, he was cool back in the halls, back in reception and shit. They're like, nah, fool. That fool sucks dick. I'm like, dick, what the fuck? Nah, for real. They're like, nah, for real. He does. So I was like, oh, shit. I was tripping, right? Because I had seen, like, weak-ass fools break down like that, but, like, I always expected it from, from like, when I seen, seen it happen to other people, I expected it to happen from them, right? So it's kind of weird because I, I didn't expect that from him. And I've always been curious, you know what I mean? Like, what the hell? Like, how does something like that happen? So the curiosity got the best of me. I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk to him, you know what I mean? That's the cool thing about YA, you had you could talk to whoever you wanted to, you know what I mean? There was no restrictions, no one could tell me anything. If they did, you just take flight, you, you get down with them. So at uh, Rec Yard, I see him, I'm like, hey, come here, let me talk to you. So he comes up, right? I was like, hey, what happened, man? And he's like, oh, man, things have been rough for me. Things have been rough for me. I was like, yeah, but, but what happened, man? And, and I told him, I heard you doing sexual favors and shit, what the fuck? Like, how does that happen? And he just puts his head down like he's ashamed and shit, you know what I mean? Like, like he, and he just started telling me the story. Basically, what he said what happened was, you know, he him, his, his homeboys were there. He had some solid homies there. He had three solid homies that everybody knew. And he, he should have had it made, right? But the thing is, the reason why a lot of people respected them is because they had a lot of enemies there, and they were always getting down with them. Like, they were always fighting with their enemies, right? So he was expected to, you know, conduct himself the same way. And um, when he was in the school area, he had a lot of fights to get into. And one day, he's walking... Uh, the square, the square is kind of crazy because there's two lines, right? If you're on this side, but you need to go to class over here, you're going to walk in a line that way, right? And you're single file. And there's also people that are on this side that need to walk this way. So two single file lines walking this way, right? People are constantly passing each other. But there's a lot of fights. Like There's a lot of disrespect for people in the school area. There's people you're going to, everybody from, from the whole entire institution is there. So you're going to bump into people. You mean, if you, if you, you're supposed to get down with somebody, you're going to bump into them, right? So somebody was coming his way. He's in line with somebody, right? And, um, you know, he's in line with somebody that was his boy. And he's like, hey, that's that fool your homeboys got into it. You mean that's the one you got to get down with? It's on site, you know what I mean? So this guy that he's supposed to get down with had uh, disrespected his neighborhood. Not only his neighborhood, but they disrespected his homeboys that passed away. If someone disrespects your homeboys that passed away... Or your family that passed away, that's on site. You know what I mean? So he sees him, right? He's coming up. He's coming up. He's coming up. And he passes him by. Boom. Nothing, right? And the guy's like, hey, that was him. That was him. What the fuck? Go back, fool. And he's like, oh, I'll get him next time. 
shit, that shit don't fly in there. So he thought this fool was his boy. He thinks it's cool, right? He's not going to tell him anything. He's not going to tell anybody anything. But that's not the way it works in there. The way it works in there is if you show any kind of weakness, like, you're letting everybody down, right? So he couldn't let that fly, the, the guy he was with. So he told everybody, right, in the cottage, hey, your homeboy right here, this fool punked out, right? Bam. So they said, fuck that shit. They told him keep this neighborhood out of his mouth, so he had to do that. Uh, they told him that he could no longer, you know, be affiliated with respected Chicanos, you know what I mean? Firma Raza is what they call themselves at the time. Uh, he could no longer be respected. He could no longer be affiliated with them. And he couldn't touch the TV, he couldn't touch the microwave. Like, he had no privileges, right? Like, like he was just done. No, no respect, no word. And they basically said he's open season. Now, because he's broke, he doesn't have anything to offer for protection. A lot of times, uh, people will protect you if you, you know what I mean? have canteen and you, you shoot him a little something but he didn't have anything so he was open season there was one cat in there that you know would just take advantage of people like that so he calls him over he says hey i need to talk to you so he fucking uh sits down next to him pulls out a knife this is what he tells me he says he pulls out a knife puts it to his throat and says hey excuse my language the way he said it he says, you're gonna suck my dick or i'm gonna kill you I said, what the fuck? What, 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 what happened? And he's like, well, I didn't want to die. I was like, hell nah. So at the time, I'm thinking, man, you better, man, you take a motherfucking knife to the to the throat. I mean, you better take off on this food. Like, fuck it, take your chances. Like, like fuck that. You ain't going out like that. But for him, he, he didn't want to die. He was scared, you know what I mean? So he did. He did what he felt was necessary to continue breathing. And... Um, you know what I mean? That wasn't the last time. It continued to happen, like, repeatedly. He was repeatedly being raped, repeatedly being pressured uh, to give sexual favors. And, um, yeah, it was pretty bad. And uh, I, I could see the, the how traumatized he was because uh, there was a point where I was talking to him and I wanted to stretch, right? So I went like this. Stretch, right? And he's like, oh. Like, he's not the same, right? Like, when he was, when I knew him before all this happened, like, he would walk with his chest out chip on his shoulder now he's kind of head down shoulder slouch you know what i mean like he wasn't the same cat and um yeah so back then i i thought to myself man this fool's a fucking punk i can't believe he went out like that right but now looking back as a parent because i'm a parent now you know what i mean i'm a fucking adult uh i think about like god damn that fucking sucks man because this is a little boy right he was maybe about 15 16 years old and another well 16, 17 year old kid was raping him, right? And um, I was like thinking, damn, imagine how he must have felt every fucking day waking up to that nightmare. That shit must have fucking sucked for him. And I said, man, imagine as a parent not knowing the safety of your children, right? Because, uh, yeah, we were fuck ups, but we're put in this place and we're expected to be looked after as children because we were children. But things like this happened all the time. There were there were plenty of wards. That's what they call this wards, wards of the state. There were plenty of wards, you know, who got abused not only by staff members, by other wards. And uh, even the fact that a lot of staff members would turn a blind eye, that in itself was child abuse on their part, you know what I mean? So at the time, though, I kind of thought, like, man, this fool's a fucking punk. How are you not going to fight for this shit? But not everybody's built the same. That's, that was one of the main problems with the youth authority, is that you would have people who were... Hardened criminals, like you have people that are in there for murder, for carjacking, like uh, shootouts and shit, you know what I mean? They'd be busted with people who were just knuckleheads who just couldn't behave. Like maybe they skipped school, were on probation, kept violating their probation, smoked a little bit of weed, and then finally the judge says, nah, that's it. You need some, you need, you need some uh, rehabilitation. We're going to send you to a state facility. or send them to the youth authority. And not that there's kids who are like, like there's a lot of kids that were, you know what I mean? Like knuckleheads like that, they were still like they they were they handled themselves like gangsters in there, but a lot of times there was people who just made mistakes, little kids who made mistakes, and and they went in there with real predators. You know what I mean? Like people that were bred, like born and bred for that shit. Like they they that they that was their lifestyle. They didn't see any other way. So I looking back, I felt bad for the kid. You know what I mean? Like he's a man now. He's about my age now, or even you know we're about the same age. And I feel bad, like, I could only imagine, like, damn, he lived with those motherfucking scars and had to wake up to that shit. Like, that must have been a fucking nightmare, living like that every day, uh, forcefully raped, you know what I mean? Like, every day having to give sexual favors um, uh, until that other guy left, you know what I mean? And when he left, he stopped having to do that, but the abuse, the abuse continued, not sexual abuse, 
but they still beat up on him, punched on him when they wanted to. You know what I mean? Like, and there was even a time where somebody was snitching or, or something like people had a feeling, and it's called case bashing. So sometimes they feel that, uh, they call them cases, people with no respect are called cases. Sometimes they felt that cases got a little too wild or that they were getting a little too crazy. And the only way they had to, they knew how to deal with it was to put them in their place. So a lot of the wards would get up and start beating up the cases out of nowhere. Like, boom, boom, case bashing. Like, let them let them know their place. And it's kind of fucked up because think about it. Like, a lot of these kids just want to go home, right? So they're there. They're traumatized. And they think they're going to have a comfortable day one day. And then, you know what I mean? Boom, boom, take some socks to the face. Like, that's just shit they had to deal with daily. Uh, and, you know, it sucks for them, but... That, that was the life that, that was in there, you know, and that, that's what we had to deal with. And um, uh, I was fortunate enough to not have to deal with that, you know, because I had, you know what I mean, I had I handled myself a different way, but that came with other consequences that I'll, I'll talk about later on, and I'm writing a book about. But yeah, like, my decisions to try to be a fucking knucklehead, try to be a hardcore gangster and shit, you know, there, there, were, there were some consequences behind that. And I, I took some losses, you know what I mean, and then... It was emotional at the time, and I wasn't able to show emotion because I, mean, I was supposed to be a gangster. But for them, I could only imagine they were going through much more because they didn't have that mindset. You know what I mean? Their mindset was they wanted to go home. Their mindset was that they just want to be children. They just want to be kids. They want to be teens. You know what I mean? Yeah, you act up every once in a while, but they didn't expect that kind of shit. You know what I mean? And it's real shit, man. It's fucked up. So... You know, I, I'm glad that that is the that the entire California Youth Authority system was shut down because it was found to be a failure in the mid 2000s. They closed it down completely uh, because of things like that. You know what I mean? And I'm glad that happened because no child should ever have to go through that. And um, you know, that's my experience with speaking to somebody who who was a victim of rape in the Youth Authority.